Welcome back to the shop. I'm Kirk Anderson. Now this week's video is for someone who's doing photography or video in their shop. It's a camera stand for the shop. I got the idea for this camera stand from both Jeremy Schmidt and Jay Bates. The base of the stand is based on Jeremy Schmidt's design and the arm is based on Jay Bates. And I'll have links to both of their videos in the comments. If you watch Jay Bates' video, one of the reasons why he built his was because he had a crappy tripod. Well, photography has been a hobby of mine for many years. So my tripod was not crappy. But it had a large footprint. When it was fully extended, it had about a three and a half foot footprint. And I just wanted to get that footprint a little bit smaller and make it easier to get around the shop by putting it on casters. So I hope you enjoy this video and give it a like and don't forget to subscribe to my channel. So without further ado, let's get into the build. For the base, I just started with some three quarter inch Baltic birch plywood that I just happened to have laying around. There's two main parts to the base, a top and a bottom, and they're both the exact same size. For the bottom, I need to cut out a notch on each corner to allow for the casters. Using a circular saw, I cut to the line and then stop. And then I finished the cut with a handsaw. Then I clamped both pieces together to drill a hole in the center that will accept the pipe. And while they're clamped together, I also drilled quarter inch holes of where the bolts will go that will secure it together. For the sides, I used three quarter inch plywood that I had laying around. And how am I attaching it? Well, with pocket hole screws, of course. A little while ago, I built this base to put the jig in, and it makes it a whole lot easier to use the Craig jig. Now I did put a little glue on the edges, and then clamped it in, and then screwed into pocket hole screws. Now the corners, had to do a little extra work on these. Had to cut the pieces to size. Then of course, put some glue on them, spread it out, then fit the piece in, then clamp it, make sure it's nice and secure, and then drive in a pocket hole screw. Now the sides of the base are complete, just waiting for this last piece to dry. And that's what the bottom of the base looks like that will be getting the concrete. Now for the pole, I just used a regular fence post for a chain link fence. I just drilled a couple of holes in the post to put in some bolts. The purpose of these bolts is to keep the post from spinning, and once the concrete is poured in around the bolts, the post will be secure. Now before I poured the concrete, I did put the post in. Now it's hard to tell in this picture, but I did make a flange to put the post in. And then I put epoxy in it to secure it. And then I made this elaborate structure of boards to keep the post upright and plumb. And there's the base with the post in it and the bolts to secure the top. And then I did put some painter's tape around the edges because I will also glue the top down. And there it is with the concrete. Next thing to do is just slide the top of the base on there. 
and with just a little bit of finesse, the top just slid right on in. And then using washers and nuts, secure the top to the bottom. And there's the completed base with the post. It weighs roughly about 50 pounds, so it should hold the camera without any problem and shouldn't tip at all. And the post is just roughly about five feet tall. And now it's time to work on the arm that will hold the camera. And I just happen to have a nice slab of walnut that was just laying around doing nothing that's perfect for this project. I cut it down into strips, and then I cut the strips to the length I needed. Now for the sides of the base of the arm, just using half inch plywood. For the one piece of the base of the arm, that's so it can be securely tightened to the post, I'm putting a T-nut in. I'm just basically drilling a mortise that's so the T-nut will be flush. And then I just drill all the way through with a smaller bit for the bolt to go through. Then securing the T-nut, just a little bit of CA glue, and then hammer it in. Now in assembling the base for the arm, glue, of course spread it out, place the board on there, make sure it's lined up. And then I just use some brad nails to temporarily secure it. As I will come back and completely secure it with screws. Now for the arm itself, it's made out of two pieces that are the exact same length and the holes have to be drilled at the exact same point. The holes that are in the arms to support the camera, that they have to be identical in the base of the arm. And the easiest way to do this is to use the arm as a template to drill the holes in the base. Now in order to support the camera, I need to put a tripod head on it. I just epoxy the bolt into the arm and then I used an angle grinder to cut off the bolt head. For the handle to tighten the base to the pole, I just used the center cutoffs from a hole saw and glued them together and then put a bolt through them. And there's the completed camera stand. It slides relatively easy up and down the pole and it secures really well with that bolt. And in order to secure the arm, I made a long handle that so you can get leverage on it to really tighten it down. And if you watch Jay Bates' video, that bungee cord is just a little safety precaution that so if the arm gives, the camera won't slam down. and it tightens down pretty easy and it holds the weight of the camera. Well, that does it for this build. And I believe that this will be so handy in the shop when I'm videoing. The base of the stand is about 18 inches, which is less than half of the footprint of the fully extended tripod I had. The arm is about a foot and a half long which gives me a little bit of reach to get some shots that I wasn't able to get with just a tripod. Only time will tell, but so far, I think this is gonna be fantastic in the shop for shooting videos. Much better than just a standard tripod. Well, I hope you enjoy this video and give it a like, and don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And as always, all you woodworkers out there, just get out there and cut some wood.